Here he is. This is my arabesque blood. 66% head call albino male. <laughs> this boy, believe it or not, was the one that escaped the other night. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today's an interesting video. I uh, have a really good friend of mine who passed away a number of years ago, Rich Piana. You guys might know him. He followed his YouTube channel, bigger than life bodybuilding figure. And I was walking over to my snake facility to record a happy birthday video because he would have been 53 years old uh, a couple days ago. And I went to go over there and I was gonna do it in the dark outside because I thought it would be cool, a little bit more mystical. And as I walked up to my facility and my outdoor enclosures, there was a uh, like a crate that's kind of sitting there and right on top of that crate, and you're gonna see this, I'm gonna put the video up, was a boa constrictor. And one of my boas somehow, not only did it get out of its tub in my facility, it got out of the facility and didn't go anywhere. It just sat there waiting for me, looking at me. And I could swear my friend Rich was smiling at me and saying, what's up, Dave? Let's go. <laughs> so you might not believe in anything like uh, spiritual like that. You might think I'm out of my mind. But uh, for me, that was my friend Rich right there. And I picked him up and we put him back in and he's fine. Uh, thank God we didn't lose him because he's a, a beautiful arabesque blood. It's head, possible head call albino. So very valuable snake and uh, Rich, happy birthday. Let's go into the facility and see what we got. Um, <clears throat> I went over to my snake room to just check something out. I need to take a picture of something. I'm outside here. I'm looking at my diamond pythons and sitting right next to my enclosures is a boa constrictor. How this boa constrictor not only got out of his cage inside, because he was not in outside, and how he got outside is a mystery of mysteries. Uh, I'd love to figure this one out. I don't even know where he came from. He's obviously just sitting here like, Daddy, please bring me back inside and put me away. I, I don't know what made me come over here. Something drew me. Actually, my good friend Rich Piana, who passed away, may he rest in peace. He would, would have been 53 years old today. I came over here to do a video a tribute video for him that they're putting together with the uh, company he used to work for, 5% Nutrition, and that he founded as well. And uh, maybe this was Rich saying, go get your snake back. Here he is. Outside. This snake could have gone anywhere in, in, my, in, in creation. Never would have found him again. That's divine intervention right there. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> All right, it's Annie Hall, the anaconda. She just shut out yesterday, I think it was. And just want to give you guys a good little look at her. I'm not going to take her out because it's only me. You really, it's really a two-man job. If I took her out, I'd need Pablo to film, but I'll just leave her in here for now. She's, you can see, you can get an idea of how big she is. It's like a big, I got a big hand and she's got some nice thickness to her now. She's doing great. At some point in the future, I'd like to build her more of a naturalistic enclosure where she can kind of move around a little bit more. She's got plenty of room in here now, but she's not that big. I don't know if I'd want to build her a water feature like Brian Barchik has for his anacondas. Just because the thing it might be a lot of work to clean. And that thing, was, that was very expensive, that enclosure he built. Um, I'm sure she'd love it, but I don't know. I haven't decided. She's a beautiful snake, though. She's put on a lot of size since I've had her. We'll probably feed her something this week, uh, maybe like a rabbit or something like that. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what we got in the freezer. Maybe we'll even give her some quail this week. Just for a change of pace, I like to vary her diet a little bit. And she's probably hungry because she just did shed. But look at that beautiful face. Nice, nice snake, one of my favorites. Here he is. This is my arabesque blood. 66% head call albino male. <laughs> this boy, believe it or not, was the one that escaped the other night. When I came back to my facility and he was just sitting right outside. 
right by the outdoor enclosures, waiting for Daddy to come pick him up. How he got out, we have no idea, but he's doing good. Usually he's really nasty. I think he was a little chilled less when he was outside the other night because he didn't even try to strike at me. Now he's going to probably try to bite my phone. <laughs> he's he, For some reason, this guy's a little bit nasty. He's got a little bit of a nasty attitude, but he's just such a beautiful snake. Um, when he was born, he was really red, too, because the arabesque blood really is nice when they're younger. They, they do brown out a little bit as they get older, but I got to figure out who I want to breed this boy to because he is gorgeous. And the last year or so that I bred him, I got no action. So I'm going to try him to a different female this time. We got to figure out something that's either blood or half blood that we want to breed him to and make some really cool looking snakes. Look at my little motley blood het kala albino or het red dragon. Beautiful, beautiful little boy. Growing him up nice. He looked like he uh, rubbed his nose a little bit too much in the cage. Well, probably come off when he sheds. Beautiful, nasty little boy, but really good. Beautiful blood color. Blood and motley work really well together. And then of course, we got the head red dragon in here. So at some point, obviously he's only a 22, so he's gonna probably need another year. We might see him breeding next year. Beautiful, I had to show you this little boy because he's uh, just in the process of shedding out. This is a motley sun glow. So that's a motley hypo sharp albino. Het RDR, black eye nannery. So he's het for black eye nannery. Let's pull that shit off him. There we go, we got it off the tail. Look how beautiful this guy is. Wow, what great colors in this guy. I still have a bunch of these available. These are 21s. And we have some available for sale. If you guys are looking to get into that black eye nannery project, you know, produce some of your own blizzards. These are awesome. Blizzard being the hypo, sharp albino black eyed annery they're totally white the super hypo version of that is a absolutely patternless white with red eyes they're gorgeous i'll show you in a little bit just to remind you guys if you haven't if you don't remember but look how nice this this is if you want a nice motley sun glow it's head rdr i mean this boy is ready to breed there's our blizzard super hypo blizzard that's super hypo sharp albino Black eyed annery. That's what the male I just showed you can actually make. This is, I think, the pinnacle of pinnacles in boa breeding. The super hypo blizzards are just incredible. I actually haven't listed any, but I do have some for sale if anyone's interested. This one is not for sale. This is a holdback female of mine, but I produced a bunch of them from uh, in this past season. We have, a, I think, one or two, I think one of each sex available if anyone's interested. Eventually, I will put them on uh, Morph Market, but for now, I like to give people the uh, advanced ability to buy these things before I list them, and everyone starts fighting over them. But this is obviously a beautiful, beautiful snake. And you know, if you if you don't want to go for the you know the big money and get these guys, you can just buy or take advantage of the fact that I still have some of the two-year-old or two-and-a-half-year-old now pets available, and they're beautiful too in their own right. And when they reproduce, you can make your own. Look at that snake, that is just perfection. These guys must all be pretty synced up because they're all shedding. This one just shed out too. This is a an Aztec Motley Sun Glow Head RDR, Black Eyed Henry, same, same litter. And this is a female, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I gotta move her to a bigger tub. Too big for this stuff. All right, a little update on my albino, T negative albino blood pythons. Doing really nice, they're looking good. Papa said they've been eating, giving them jumbo mice every week. There's my male and my females over here. Just kind of sprayed them down a little bit. They like a little more moisture, a little, a little more humidity in their, in their cages. Make sure we keep them a little damper. 
They'll be moving up to some bigger caging too, very shortly. I might even put them in a display cage, just because they're so beautiful. I want to be able to see these guys. So this was more of like a quarantine rack type of situation, and we'll see them in their splendor. I'll be in one of these cages in the next couple weeks. All right, I wanted to show you this one last snake for the day. I've been moving a lot of snakes around and shuffling racks. This is an Inca Costa Rican tea positive. So it's a tea positive, but it comes from Costa Rica. These are really small snakes. Inca, we know, is a, is a dwarf locality boa. And this is 66% het leopard. And I would suspect that we might actually prove this out to be leopard, het leopard, because it's really wacky looking. It's just this, this boy just shed. I've been trying to get this boy up to size so I can try to breed him this year. He's a 21, so he's he definitely um, he definitely has the potential. He's old enough. He's two and a half years old. You know, he's a little small, but like I said, these are dwarf boas. So there's a shed. Pull that out of here, and we'll just keep feeding him, and hopefully we'll get this guy up to size in time for breeding in December. All right, so uh, little by little. We have our focus cube rack here, which is where our green chain pythons and Amazon tree boas are. Um, we have a little guy up there. It's a little girl, I should say, a little Aru female. And I just bought this vision cage. It's kind of an, I, I kind of was, we had an open spot here, so I didn't want to get another focus cube. They take forever to get, and I really like vision cages, so I bought one that kind of fit perfectly up there. We haven't decided, I might put my Sanzinia in there, and I might put, actually put the other Sanzinia up there in that cage and just give them some ability to kind of do what they want. We got our Bolins in the two bottom cages. We have our annulated tree boas over here, which we showed you yesterday. They're kind of like in a breeding ball or something. I don't know, or something, something. We just cleaned out this cage. So I don't know what we're gonna be putting here. We have boas in here right now. We're keeping like our fire diamonds in the cooler part of the Facility. These used to be our all python closures. They're outside now. These are going to be, these are corn snakes. We do have some boas. I don't know why we still have boas here. We have two boas here, but most of them are corn snakes in this rack. And then we just set up, we just set up this two foot rack. We're in the process of setting up these two foot cages. Um, I thought that we would only be able to put four, but it looks like we could put a fifth one. So I'm going to order another one from Vision. The good thing about Vision cages is that the shipping is included in the price. So it doesn't even matter if, if you if you forget something and you have to reship. Usually you want to ship everything together because it's cheaper, but they don't care. They just ship everything regular mail, so especially these small cages. So I'll probably add another one right there, and then we'll have five nice two-foot cages where we can put some display animals in here. I don't know what we'll put in here. I might put um, my baby that's no longer a baby that's growing up, my uh, rhino rat snake in here. I might put my Pataeus mucosus albinos, which are my oriental rat snake albinos in here i haven't decided something that's going to be display cool display worthy i guess you could say and uh it's got to be something that can handle a little bit of cooler this room is a little cooler than the other rooms so a little by little i'm, I'm <laughs> i still got those of our boxes for our shipping for upstairs uh for my daypalumba.com website but so we this this room is really kind of developed this used to be all like stock room and now it's like Little by little, here's our incubators over here. Little by little, we are getting everything set up the way I want to. My Mata Mata Turtle's behind that little closet there. And this is still hurricane wood, as I like to call it. For our two foot enclosures, we're gonna start putting some stuff in there and setting up how we wanna have some naturalistic logs and stuff like that. So everything's coming along. These plants will go in some of the bigger enclosures. These are fake, but when we, uh, do our, maybe our monitor enclosure, we might use these just for decorations. And that's it. Incubator is pretty bare because fall pythons season has been really terrible this year. Uh, we probably have as half as many clutches as normal, but that's okay. Gives a little, a little break in the action. I still have plenty of stuff to play with and I'm happy. Bowen's python is looking good. And we're gonna wrap up today with, uh, with our little Bowen's male who loves his log he loves that log they love to climb so happy here he comes
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Our snake, our arabesque boa, is alive, well, and safe in uh, his cage, never to escape again. How he got out of the cage, I have no idea. How he got out of my facility, I have no idea. We never opened the doors. We have, like, double sweeps, and it's impossible to get out of that building. We have never had a snake get out. Uh, and, you know, he didn't even go anywhere. He just was waiting for me, so it was... Maybe it was a little, uh, my little spiritual familiar that, uh, I, I've had some animal uh, in, in encounters. When my father passed, you know, there was a pigeon that, that was in my garage and there were no pigeons here in, in Cape Coral, Florida. They're like from New York and it's ironic, but our last name, Palumbo in Italian means pigeon. And... I have to believe my father was uh, watching over me that day and saying, uh, here I am. That pigeon would not leave my garage. I was trying to chase him out of there initially because I didn't even know what was going on. He was just sitting there and he would not leave. So, you know, sometimes we get visits from animals and there's a spiritual nature to it. I don't know if, you know, not everyone believes, but uh, it's the meaning we put behind things that make it important. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, Show us the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.